I'm the Pod Chef. Today we're going to make cider. I've got my basic cider kit and I went out and picked a bunch of apples a few weeks ago and they've been sitting out here in the cold, crisp autumn air. And that's really the best thing for apples if you're going to make cider is to pick them and let them sit for at least two weeks because you get at least a third more juice out of the apples than if you just pick them fresh and use them straight away. I've also gone to a lot of trouble to pick apples or at least take apples which fell fresh that day when I was picking them rather than picking up a lot of windfall apples off the ground which not only can be contaminated by bacteria but also have already begun to deteriorate before we even get a chance to use them. So let's go over the basic equipment we've got here. First off, we've got a lot of apples. Many different varieties of apples make the best ciders. you'll want an even balance of crisp, sweet, and tart apples as well. Now I've also got two tubs full of water. In the first tub, which the apples are in already, I have a splash of bleach, and that's gonna help sanitize the apples because I did pick many of them off the ground as they fell when I was picking the apples out of the tree. The second tub, which is empty at the moment, is just for rinsing the bleach off the apples. And then we're gonna move straight in to the apple press. This is a simple press, uh, several years old at this point. It's got a simple metal cutter that's and a, and a feed chute powered by an electric motor. Once the apples are macerated by the cutter, they drop down into these awaiting tubs. Now there's two racks which contain the apple pulp, or the pomace mash. When the first tub is filled, it gets moved to the second tub position. And then we squeeze the apples with a ram, pressing the juice out, and it comes out at the base into a bucket that we'll collect it in. Just give these apples a quick rinse. Pop them straight into the rinse water. And from there we'll commence to pulping them up to make cider. Pull off any stems, bits of twig that are with them. Okay, we're gonna get started and make some cider. Slide the top off of here. This is gonna be critical because this particular press happens to spit the apples up back out of the uh, press unless we're careful. I'm going to have to cut some of the larger apples in pieces. I think we can turn on the press, except we jammed it with the apples I just threw in. There we go. Turn on the press. Start feeding the apples in. Cutting the apples a little bit also helps give them, give the blades inside the cutter a little bit more purchase. This is a fairly simple cutter and press apparatus. Some of the more high quality ones work a lot more efficiently. Ooh, 
look at that. Nice bit of sugar right in the center of this apple. Now when the first tub is full, we'll move it forward and we'll fit it with this plug which will help us press the pulp down. We might have to level it out a little bit. Slide this in there. Meanwhile, we'll put the second tub under here so we can keep pressing apples, cutting them. And then we'll crank down the plunger and squeeze out the juice. Now I've lined the tub that I'm catching the juice in with a fine mesh cloth to help catch any bits of pulp or other matter that happen to show up in the finished juice. So I should be able just to extract that quite easily. Now in order to get a good press of the cider, we'll leave this under tension and compression uh, rather for several minutes while we continue to fill the second basket. When that's full, we'll release the pressure on this and start the whole process over again. Now when I'm selecting apples for the cider, not only am I looking for a broad range of variety, I think I probably have three or four, probably even five different types and flavors of apples here, but I'm also looking for quality. Now this blemish here is okay. It won't affect the taste of the cider at all. But something like this bad spot, which was a bruise because the apple was at the bottom of the basket, I'll definitely want to cut that off and toss that to the chickens, maybe even some of this inside, before I go ahead and put it into the cider. As you can see, I'm not the only one out here enjoying the cider making. Once the second tub is full, I'm going to start winding up the plunger on the first tub so that we can extract it and, and move the second tub forward and repeat the whole process over again. With a small press like this, it's slow and painstaking work, but the reward is definitely worth it. With the plunger raised and the tub well drained, we kind of try and carefully extract it so we don't drop too much of the pulp into the cider below. And then we try and <clears throat> empty it into, the, into a wheelbarrow and we'll feed this to the chickens. It's easier said than done. Well, we've made several pressings and I've collected quite a pot of cider. Just going to strain out the bag here. Collected quite a little bit of pulp. And now I'm going to load up this five gallon glass carboy so I can make some hard apple cider. But first, I got to have a taste. Wow, that is good. I'll be having plenty of that later on. 
I've got the carboy sanitized and I'm going to just ladle the cider in here to begin with so I get the pot empty enough just to pour straight in. Now there's a huge debate about whether to drink apple cider raw or not. I've always done so, so I'm not too keen on pasteurizing it. Plus, if you pasteurize it, you kill all the subtle flavors that each individual apple lend to the cider. But I've also taken the precaution to kill any bacteria, I hope, by soaking the apples in the bleach water first, rinsing them off, and then trying to keep everything scrupulously clean. Once I've got the carboy full, I'll bring it into the house to warm up a bit and then until it comes to a temperature where I can pitch in some cider yeast that I imported from England. And then it's simply a matter of letting the yeast do its job to hopefully ferment this out to a medium dry hard cider which we'll be enjoying throughout the winter. Well, that about does this carboy. I'm going to leave some headspace in there for the esters and the fermentation process to take hold. The rest of the cider and all these other apples, I'll be continuing to press and fill up another carboy similar to this one. And finally, the remaining bit of cider will drink fresh. To keep up with my zero waste philosophy, I'm taking the apple pressings out to feed to the chickens. Seems the best thing to do with it. I could compost it for the garden, but I know the chickens will appreciate it much more. And in return, they'll pay me for my efforts with lovely eggs. Come on, look out there, pup. Come on, dogs. Come on, chicks! Chick, 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 chicks! Come on! Come on, chickens! How do I get it? I'm pretty sure once I leave, they'll enjoy the apples as much as we'll enjoy the cider. Well, it's starting to rain out here now, and I've pressed about 10 gallons of cider, and I've got another 10 gallons to press. So I'll be saying goodbye to you now, and we'll see you again next time on the GastroCast. Take care, and keep on cooking. Bye now.